So, you've just retired after a lengthy and largely mediocre football career. You will always remember that equaliser in the FA Cup fourth round match against Arsenal, and that season as a backup left back in the Premier League for an ultimately relegated Norwich City. But what do you do now? Pub landlord? Pundit on BBC Radio Suffolk? Bit of coaching before being offered the manager's job at your boyhood club? Let's go with that. Who knows where it could lead? Founded in 1912, Cambridge United have largely been a Football League mainstay throughout their century of existence, but usually somewhere towards the middle of the fourth tier, occupying a position largely out of sight and out of mind. You know they exist, but you forget they're there. Counting such esteemed luminaries as Holmes Under the Hammer presented Dion Dublin and probable secret footballer Dave Kitson on their books, the club have played as high as the second tier, but spent much of their recent history out of the Football League altogether after dropping through the trapdoor in 2005. It took nine years to get back, going up by the playoffs in 2014, and they have resumed their position near the foot of League 2 ever since. Indeed, last season, while much attention was given over to the relegation of the Football League's oldest club, Notts County, and that of the rapid rise and fall story of Yeovil Town, and indeed the successful survival of Macclesfield Town under Sol Campbell, there was virtually no mention of the fact that just three points above them, Cambridge United nearly slid back into the National League once again. Growing up, they were the closest side to me of any note whatsoever, so I've always held a soft spot in my footballing brain. With some pretty average facilities and limited finances that you'd expect from a bottom half League 2 side, but a squad with some potential, I think Cambridge are an excellent place to start our managerial journey. I'm Mr. Grand 2, and this is Careering Onwards. Yes, that's right, we are going to be taking charge of my childhood local side, Cambridge United. They nearly got relegated out of the Football League last season, but we're here now, and things will surely only get worse for them. I mean, I have loaded in the, the Vanarama National just in case things, things go really bad. But anyway, this is where we're going to start our career. They are, of course, a team who finished quite low down in League 2 last season, nearly got relegated. Pretty small club, not necessarily full of finances, not the highest reputation, but a team who have been there or thereabouts in League 2 for the last few years and a good, a, good, a good place for us to start our career. Let's have a look and see how things are doing. Uh, the board, are they're not overly ambitious, which is good. They want us to develop some young players, which I think is good. There are some decent young players here, I believe. They want us to build a new stadium. I'm not sure we're going to be necessarily here for that long but the main targets for this season is avoid a relegation battle unlike last season in real life and once try and reach the second round of the FA Cup be competitive in the League Cup as well but that's not particularly not particularly uh, sort of necessary but I think you know, so that's that's got to be our aim avoid getting relegated I don't think it's going to be a big ask to get promoted this season or even get into the playoffs I don't think that's going to happen probably not even next season they don't even want us to reach the playoffs until the third season and we might not even be here by then but we'll, we'll give it a go i'm just going to agree to all that and then let's have a look at the squad now there are some there are some players here who i have heard of the, the key man the star man quite clearly is jack rolls midfielder on loan from tottenham he is he's pretty good and he is a natural in two of the roles that i like to play in the tactic we're going to try the same tactic from the chelsea save um whether that works remains to be seen, but we'll give it a go. But Jack Rolls is going to be a key part of it. We've got some good young players coming through from the Youth Academy, which is what the board obviously wants to do. Leon Davis is a good young right back here, certainly getting some game time. Other names to pick out at this early stage. Samir Carruthers is the sort of probably, well, he's the highest paid player, one of the most notable players. We're going to have to find a role for him. I think he's, he should be fine in midfield, probably in the Mazzala role as well. Some decent attributes on him. A man who's been around the Football League for quite a long time, formerly of Sheffield United. In fact, they picked him up from Sheffield United after they got promoted. But a lot of experience there in the Football League. He should do some good things for us. Callum Burton as well, very solid goalkeeper. I believe used by Dr. Benji in his save with Boston United last year to some success. And Liam O'Neill, another very, very solid, dependable player at this kind of level good in defensive midfield and in central midfield as well. So a lot of a lot of decent players that we, we will have to sort of get used to as the save continues. I think th th there's some good opportunities for some of the youngsters here. Um, Harry Darling, another one who is coming through the youth academy. I mean, he looks, he's 19 years old. That is pretty good for a centre-back. 11 passing for a centre-back in League 2, I think, is really quite good. So there are definitely some areas that we can potentially strengthen. So how much money do we have? Not not really much. £351,000 in the bank, 10000 in the transfer budget, which I'll probably just shove into the wage budget, which is not the biggest. Not much wiggle room there, but we'll see We'll see what we can do, because I think we need to probably bring in a couple of players. We are, we are, I think, a little bit light 
in terms of coverage at fullback, maybe in midfield. Tactics, let's have a look. Well, I mean, it's suggesting we, we go with, with something like a route one tactic. We will, we will do that as well. We are going to go with this system as the main one. And we'll, we'll load up the vertical tiki taka as a backup as well. But then we will we will create a sort of more, I guess, sensible tactic. We'll go with the route one tactic. So we'll go with the four four two. I mean, that's just I think is is quite logical. We'll do that just as a just as a backup option. I'm not planning on using it. I don't want to use it. I, I don't see there's any reason why we can't play some fluid attacking, high pressing football in League Two. I don't see how that can possibly go wrong. I mean, I'm I'm not, I'm a very inexperienced manager. But I did meet Pep Guardiola once at a Manchester City game. I mean, I was in the stands and I sort of I asked him to to come and see me. He didn't hear me, but I did meet him. It's, it's, it's essentially the same thing. And I'm going to apply Jurgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola's tactical approaches to a League Two side, which I'm sure can only go well. Let's just check the injury situation as well. Yeah, we've got Gary Dagan, who is unfortunately he's out for six months. What a viral infection? What's wrong with him? Okay, I've just looked it up. He's got a, he has a blood infection in real life. We we wish you well, Gary. We wish you well. But yeah, Kyle Noyle, he's out for for four months, which is not good. Harvey Nibs out for eight weeks. Lewis John out for eight weeks as well. So we'll sort of see how the team shapes up during preseason and and during the the season as we go. But I mean, we got we actually do have quite a lot of players who can play in these roles really quite well. We've got we got some decent wingers, Harrison Dunk on the left hand side, Hannah on the right hand side. Obviously, we talked about the midfielders, I and mean, we haven't even mentioned George Maris. George, I'm going to call him George Maharis at some point. He's there as well. A lot of options. Centre back. We've got a lot of really good coverage. I think plenty of decent players there. I mean, it's we I've done a quick a quick pick, and it's put in George Taft. Who? What is up with his eyes? Was he squinting when the when the picture was taken? I think defensively we are pretty decent. I mean, we, I think we've got a, a, quite a decent squad that does kind of fit the tactic we've got here. As I said, I do think we need a little bit of coverage. I think we, we kind of are lacking another left winger. I'm not necessarily sure about our strikers, how good they are. And I do think we probably need a little bit more depth in defensive midfield with Gary Dagan out for so long. And potentially another backup either at left back or at right back. Although saying that, I've not actually looked at the under 23s. Is there anyone good in this? We've got Andy Dallas, who's highly rated. I mean, he's not bad, is he? He could play a role. He could play a role this year. We've got Joshua Batten, who's, he, again, he's decent. He's got good passing on him. Could play a role. And then Norville Williams, who's a left back. Oh, excellent. Excellent. High potential left back. Right, we don't need a left back. You can go in the first team, mate. Anyone in the under-18s? Not, not really. Where are we predicted to finish this season? That's not, we're not on the top bit. Where are, we're 19th. Okay, so they don't think we're going to get relegated. I don't think we're going to do, do much better than last season. But we do have Jack Rolls in the dream team, the media dream team. That's good. We'll need to keep him fit. So overall, then, I think not too bad in terms of squad. I think we've got some decent options here. And I think it will actually probably fit the tactic quite well. But obviously, we have got, we've got this one training just in case. But anyway, I'm going to play through pre-season. I'm going to do some transfers. I'm going to sort out the staff, training, all sorts of things like that. And we'll be back for the first game of the season and the first proper game of our managerial career against Bradford City. 40% of transfer revenue is made available until 7.53 million of revenue has been generated. Thereafter, this will drop to 20%. So if we make more money, we'll get less. Anyway, I don't know what that means, but we're back. We're back. We've made some transfers. Pre-season is done. I've sorted out the staff as well. Let's have a look and see how things have gone. Staff, we've improved quite a bit in terms of physios. I've still kept the same assistant manager because this is something I want to think about as we go through. I want to keep the same backroom staff with me as we go to you know from club to club. We've got Mark Bonner. He's the assistant manager. He was here at the start. He's pretty, you know, not awful, decent. There weren't really many other people who were particularly better. I've kept Mark Bunn as well as a goalkeeping coach. Not awful, again, for this level, but I brought in Gareth Piper as a fitness coach and Mark Newson as sort of a general coach. I'm not sure any of them will be particularly coming with us on the journey, but you never know. We'll put them, put them on some courses, see how well they, well they do. And to say as well, these are the leagues we've got loaded from the start. We're going to mostly be in England, of course. We could go to the, down to the Vanarama National if we need to. But then we have the top leagues in France, Germany, Portugal, Italy, Holland, Scotland and Spain loaded too. And my manager's quite a sort of, sort of middling-ish, not amazing in terms of attributes. Continental B licence, that was suggested for Cambridge. 
but then also professional footballer from a local level. Right then, transfers. One player has gone out. Mark Richards has gone to Billericay Town on a free. Not really interested in the money. We're just interested in getting him off the wage bill to free up a bit of space. Journeyman striker. He's 37 years old. Pace of six. I'm I'm just not really not really about that. Not really my kind of thing. Hopefully he does well for Billericay. But we have brought in four players, all on loan and all who could, I think, make a pretty good difference. Maybe not quite Jordan Lawrence Gabriel. He's on loan from Nottingham Forest. Good potential. Some decent attributes like long throw is nice, good determination and pace as well, but he's really here only as a backup fullback because, well, we have got uh, injury to Kyle Noyle, of course. He's he's quite good, but he's going to be out for quite a while, seven weeks still. We need a little bit of coverage in that area anyway. Also joining on loan is Callum Whelan. He is on loan from Watford. Again, five-star potential. Looks um, some really nice attributes, lovely passing. Lovely tackling, not quite good in terms of vision, but a lot of other stuff as well. Really quite nice for a midfielder at this level. Probably not going to be starting for us, but can play in all three midfield roles pretty well. And then the big two who I think could be starting regularly for us and who I think could actually make a really big impact in the division. Will Ferry is the first. He's on loan from Southampton. I mean, just some really good attacking attributes for a left winger. We needed another left winger. I think he's an improvement on what we had in the form of Harrison Dunk. Good physicals, crossing and dribbling is nice and nice mentals as well. I think he could do pretty well for us in League 2. And then the big one is on 1.6k a week, which is not, not the smallest amount of money, but I think definitely worth it. Adam Ida joins us on loan from Norwich City. He scored a hat-trick for Norwich in real life against Preston in the FA Cup a few weeks ago. And, well, he's, uh, he's a player I've enjoyed using on FM for the last couple of years on FM19, I did a save with Norwich where he won the European Golden Boy. I'm doing a save on FM20 with Norwich where he finished third in the European Golden Shoe for Norwich. That was in the second season in game. We've got him in League 2. I think he could be really, really something special at this level. Pace of 16 is fantastic, but 14 finishing, 12 composure is not something that's necessarily particularly common at this level so those signings have actually boosted us up to 17th place in the season preview two places up i mean that's what you like to see and pre-season has gone pretty well just one goal conceded no defeats a win against shrewsbury draw with coventry and draw with lincoln city all three of them are league one side so that's not too bad then wins against chelmsford hendon and st Neers, which you'd expect us to do but some pretty 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 solid performances especially defensively so then, Bradford City in the first game of the season and our managerial career, we are raring to go. Now the question is, which system do we go with? This one or the slightly more defensive one? You'll know this as a constant issue if you watch any of the Chelsea save. I have scrapped the Route 1 tactic as well, by the way. we're gonna, If we need it, we're going to go to a 4-4-2, but with wing play because it's just, just a bit more sort of how I want to play football. I'm not about that lumping it forwards kind of life unless it's a bit, you know, a bit more grace and skill. We could go with this, and if it's not working, we could switch it up. We could we could go with a more sort of defensive, slightly less intense system and just sort of maybe ease our way into the game. I think we're going to be bold. We're, we're going to be a bold manager. We're going to go for it at the start in this first game. Could go disastrously wrong at Bradford. I mean, where were Bradford predicted to finish? We probably should have looked that up already. They've just been relegated, so they're predicted to finish second. So maybe, maybe slightly, maybe we're not going to be that bold. We'll go with this, even just for the first 20 minutes. It's not, it's not massively different, just a bit sort of more ponderous. Anyway, the team for this opening game is going to be Callum Burton in goal. I think he's got some really nice attributes about him. Uh, Jones is going to be on the left-hand side, Daniel Jones. Leon Davis, a young right-back from our academy, he's going to be on the right-hand side. Central defence is going to be Greg Taylor, and also, uh, hopefully the sun's not in his eyes, George Taft is going to be on the left-hand side there. Liam O'Neill at the base of the midfield. And that 10, 10 vision isn't great, but I think he's, he's solid enough to do a job. Jack Rolls, on loan, of course, from Spurs is going to be in the box-to-box -box role. And then Samir Carruthers, sort of highest-paid player, one of the, one of our better players, he's going to be in attacking midfield. He has, he's had quite a good pre-season. Will Ferry is going to be starting on the left-hand side for us. I think he could do some, some good stuff this season. Reggie Lamb, who we've not talked about, he was on holiday at the start of the save. He's going to be on the right-hand side. Bermudan player, Bermudan international, could help us out. And then Adam Ida, of course, is going to be leading the line. Two Irishmen in our front three. All right, bench is sorted out. We're good to go, and we're not allowed more than five lone players in the squad. Of course, of course we're not. Of course we're not. 
All right, we'll put in Norville Williams, the young left back from the academy, put him on the bench instead, and just hopefully he doesn't need to come on. Right then, I'm a bit a bit nervous for this, our, our first ever managerial game, Bradford City, got James Vaughan making his debut, how old is he now? He's only 31, I'm sure he's about 50, seems to have been around forever, the former former Everton man, he's, he has, he's definitely been around for a very long time. So look, we're not we're not expected to get promoted, we're not expected to challenge the league, I think we all, we all know that, got to be realistic, but we've got nothing to lose, show what we're capable of, we're not going to get relegated. If you believe the season preview table, let's just let's go out there and just to show everyone what we're, what we're about. Okay, first highlight, and it's Bradford coming forward. It's Pritchard on the left-hand side. He's been rubbed, though. Rubbed by Davis. Feeding it to Samia Carruthers. Lamb. Reggie Lamb looking to play a ball. We've, we've been closed down. Some good good passes there early on. James Vaughan's in. We highlighted him before the game, but he is offside. Free kick in from Jack Rolls. Looking for the head of anyone. He's found Reggie Lamb. Still on the ball. Very involved early on. Is is uh, is Reggie, not Richie. I, I'm, that's going to be difficult, isn't it? Reggie Lamb. James Vaughan's only involved as well, though. This time it's blocked. It's come to Cook. Puts a shot in, and it goes wide of the post. I mean, we were on the ball quite a lot early on here. Jack Rolls with a free kick, and the first goal of the match, the first goal of our managerial career in a competitive sense anyway, is for us. Greg Taylor up from the back, heading home. The Premier League quality there from Jack Rolls. I mean, he's, he's never played a senior game for... The Spurs, as far as I know, but I mean he's, he's from from the Spurs academy, showing showing the difference there. Good free kick in Greg Taylor at the far post, heading home to give us the lead. Um, James Vaughan, I mean we we we, we highlighted him before the game. We've clearly been kicking kicking him a bit. He's gone off with the physio at the moment. So Bradford down to ten men. Ote though heading against the post is not not the best not the best uh, thing for us there defensively. But we're still we're doing well. Coming up to half time. And at the break, we are indeed 1-0 up. I mean, keep keep it going. This is this is good. A good, solid start. Well, the ball's come out to Reggie Lamb. He goes with a shot in. Nearly a goal from the Bermudan. Very, very good opportunity there. I see that George Taft is on a yellow card, presumably because he's he must have slipped because the sun was in his eyes. Well, not long to go now. Rolls with another free kick. Taylor again, looking for his second of the game. Doesn't find the target this time. And we're working it forwards again, and it was another. It's a really quick chance. It was a throw-in, I think. I'm not sure it was a throw-in or a free kick. I think it was a throw-in. Indeed, it was. Davis skirting across the ground, pings it back in, getting it from O'Neill, and Will Ferry on his debut, heading home. I was about to take him off because he's not had a very good game, but he scored now, so he can stay out there. There is an issue with the fact that Adam Ida is not a natural complete forward, and we're playing that. I mean, he can easily become one. Whether he's going to sort of get the attributes to do so. Here, I don't know. There is an argument to maybe change him up to maybe being a pressing forward, maybe being an advanced forward. I mean, we'll, we'll try him as a pressing forward for now, but I do obviously want him to get experience in the complete forward role because that's sort of the best one for the tactic. Well, I should I made a substitution. Probably shouldn't have done that. Should, definitely shouldn't have done that. Never, never make substitutions in games like this. Never make substitutions. Luca Navarro puts the ball in and... I mean, we're 2-1 up, aren't we? We just scored another goal. I really should be paying attention. I was, I thought that was it. We'd, we'd thrown it away. That was the equaliser. We're still winning 2-1. So maybe not quite at the end of the world. We're going to get through then to the end of the game. And we've won. I mean, I, I thought we were drawing. But I thought we'd just chucked away two points there. We, we were 2-0 up. I mean, I did commentate on the second goal, didn't I? Shows how much attention I pay. But there we go. Our first match in charge at Cambridge United. Our first match as a manager. And it's a 2-1 win against a team who were predicted to finish second. Not too bad at all, not too bad at all, showing that we can play the, the football of, of Guardiola, kind of, in League 2, at least at least the first day of the season. Let's have a look at the league table, and we are in fifth place, in contention for the playoffs, after literally one game. But not a bad start, not a bad start at all, and, well, we've got quite a few games in close succession. Obviously, it's League 2, you play a lot of football, but... We're going to go quite quite a bit further in. We'll come back, probably sort of. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to sort of go too quickly, but then I don't want to sort of dwell too much and and you know not not make huge amounts of progress. We'll see how things are going. I'm certainly going to go through the rest of August. We'll probably come back sort of end of end of September, start of October type thing. Check in, see how things are going. Can we keep up our impressive impressive start? It was quite good. What were the stats like? Plenty of chances being created. Possession in control of that one as well. Yeah, we're, we, we're looking looking good at this very, very early stage. 
So yeah, subject to change, obviously, but perhaps maybe sort of Swindon, Stevenage, Macclesfield, this kind of time when we might well come back. The league trophy, we're not going to focus on too much unless we get into the knockout round, mainly because our group is Portsmouth, Wickham and Southampton under 23s, so we're probably not going to get out of that one. But there we go then, a fantastic start to life here at Cambridge United at the Abbey Stadium. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you're excited for the new series. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well so you don't miss the next episode. And I will see you next time.